seats on the SUV. It was decided to be an iconic British vehicle. The SUV is, is almost another character. We think it looks great. This thing has so much gear on it, it's incredible. It's kind of a sexy vehicle. We've blinged it out a bit. It has everything you need. We've got TV screens. We've got a satellite on top of the vehicle. Fast. I mean, John Barryman's driving. Frightening. Hello? The SUV is a little bit of a mobile hub. It's kind of the USS Enterprise of the Torchwood. It's, it's the thing that carries them all around. A little bit of a Batmobile. I love the SUV, and I think Tosh loves the SUV. Basic tracking and surveillance. It's actually Tosh's desk on wheels painted black. I mean, all the gear in the back is really hers. This is the police computer system. You shouldn't have this. It's her domain. It's her mobile office, I would say. And Captain Jack's the chauffeur. And it gets them anywhere they need to go in Cardiff, usually very fast. I'm going to break the speed limit, big time. I rang up Russell and I said, please, will you ride in an incredible SUV? Russell doesn't really care about cars, and so he just wrote big black SUV. First time that John and I met, we started talking about various things, and we suddenly realised our passions collided when we started talking about the SUV as it was described in the opening script. So he started talking about his favourite cars, and I was sort of saying, well, what about these cars? And I was actually talking about all the American cars, and he was talking about all the British cars, and eventually we were swapping ideas and, and just sort of saying what our dream vehicle would be. And we were just making references back to things like the, the big transit van in the A-Team and all those kind of cars. And so that was the idea, was just to come up with a car that became an iconic symbol of the team and the show. Torchwood. The art department went out and looked at various cars. I emailed them various pictures of cars that I was thinking of. So we decided to go for a British make. We decided to go for something that was already fairly iconic over here, and we just literally looked at second-hand car markets until eventually we found one and went, that's the car for us. The art department sent it to um, a, um, a place that, that specifically does sort of body work, um, uh, body shop work for cars, and they sent it with various designs, and the roof is replaced, the, the front bonnet is replaced, the, the radiator's been replaced, there's so much work been done to it. I think they had it for about four or five weeks, and then it came back to us, and so we, we didn't see it at all. It just sort of went from this internet picture off to the body shop, and then they, they did all the work, and we saw it back on the road about five weeks later. I really want to like it, I really do, but they've put all this stuff on top of it, and it just falls apart all the time, and it's stupid. The first day I fell out of it, I fell on my ass. Sorry, what can I say? It's pretty hilarious, because they've added all sorts of stuff to it. Half of it doesn't work, but I suppose it looks good. <laughs> what I thought that the Torture Woman Bill would be is like an ice cream van or a milk float that sort of changes and looks very innocuous from the outside, whereas inside, you know, you've got this massive engine. But no, we've got this very conspicuous black SUV. It's not meant to be a terribly secret um, car. And marvellously, the SUV has Touchwood branded all over it just in case someone nicks it and, and they need to get it back. And very bizarrely, it's written in yellow on the roof. And you think, hmm, they're a secret organisation. Why have we written Torchwood in yellow? So we've kind of blanked it out on some episodes. But for some fans, you can see the yellow Torchwood logo. <laughs> We just wanted something that just made a statement and just looked really cool and sexy. But it's a bit of a nightmare to film in. I cannot tell you how many conversations I have in every single town meeting about how many people can fit in the SUV. To fit five adults in a car and then try and film them, you've got to try and get the camera behind them. So what else do we know about her to give us a lead? Or you've got to get the camera in the passenger seat looking back at the people in the back seats. 
What are you all looking at me for? So it's actually really tricky to get a camera and five people in there. So once you've got the modifications in there and you've got all the gear and you've got the screens and the keyboards and everything, there's actually no room to put a cameraman. So when we first took it out um, and we wrecked it to do the first filming in it, we were literally walking around it going, well, where is the cameraman going to go? How are we going to get the camera in here? So we took some of the modifications out and whenever there were scenes in scripts written for them to be travelling in the SUV, um, the first thing we would do is go back to the writer and say, do they all need to be in the SUV? Can we have maybe two or just three people in the SUV? And then we've got space for a camera person to sort of sit and take the very shots they need to make the scene work. She's really great under pressure. There's got to be something. What did you say Karis's job was? She's just a temp receptionist. Where's she working at the moment? I can pull her employment files up. Conway Clinic. You're joking. There are lots of uh, technical problems when you start to take electrical things out of vehicles and add new things to them. So it, that was a very big challenge. And the thing that's, that actually suffered the most, really, is that we've had to take quite a lot of the, the interior out of it to, to, to get our bits to work and be fitted in here. There's a shaft in the back that comes out from the back into the back seat, and from it drops these computer screens and these keyboards. So it feels like it's almost this sort of portable computer, like a portable hub that they can all drive around Cardiff in. Um, this is really where we do all the manual operation of the systems in here. Um, I think the people who, who, who operate it are very practised in what they do and make it look automated, even though it is manual. Filming in any car is quite difficult if it's moving. The easiest car shot to do is when it's stationary. So if people are getting into a car or talking while the car is stationary, it's quite straightforward to do. As soon as you move a car, it becomes a very, very difficult logistical thing to film. You either have to have it on the back of a low loader, so it's basically being driven around on the back of a truck, um, which is why, if you look carefully, the car always looks slightly higher than it should do when it's on the road. Um, or it's carried around on an A-frame, um, which basically just, just drags it along the road. So the actors don't actually have to drive the car whilst they're acting. <sighs> the SUV. Do you know, I'm a bit bored of the SUV. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. I think we have lots of boys on this show who just love that SUV. My God, the conversations about the SUV. When that SUV first appeared at the unit base and we were all set out there to look at it and, you know, say how marvellous it was, I've never seen anything like it. It was like a carnival. You couldn't, I actually couldn't get near the SUV because there was about a layer of three people standing between me and it. They were so excited by it. The first time we got the car into set, we all sort of just <laughs> like moths to a flame, all sort of stood around and went, we want one of those. I took it for a spin one time around Cardiff uh, while we were filming and um, everybody just looks at it. You should see the looks that it gets. It's un incredible. It's an incredible vehicle. I can talk about that SUV for months. It's a pain in the arse and it's very beautiful. I do love the SUV because I, th I think it's done what we set out to do, which is create an iconic car. I've <laughs> seen it in Cardiff when I've been driving to the office and it's driven past me on the way to location. And I do just break out into a grin because I just think, that's ours, that's our Torchwood car. It looks fantastic. And of course it's not secret. It's like James Bond driving around in Aston Martin. Of course it's not going to be, you know, secret and... and um, uh, and people are, uh, of course, people are going to notice it because it stands out, but we don't care. It's iconic and looks great.